Hello friends of YouTube, welcome to Mike Reads the World. Uh, pardon my slipping map here, it just kind of is hanging up there by a thread. <laughs> I haven't taped it to the wall or anything. Today I'm talking about Noli Me Tangere by Jose Rizal from the Philippines, written in the late 1800s, and this author died because he wrote these this book, uh, as well as another book called... Um, the El Filibusterismo, uh, which is a play on words of like filibuster in Filipino, I guess. Um, but yeah, we're talking about his first novel, which is most known as the great novel of the Philippines. I have it here in Spanish and English. Do not, I mean, I would not recommend the Spanish edition. I was very disappointed because like, look at this text. I mean, I can read small text it's not a problem but like this is this is even pushing what i can handle and it smells like really strongly of incense or something and it gives me a headache every time i i have to reference it and i did reference it a few times for something is it's really a shame because it does seem like it flows better in the original language as most things do but it's fine in english and that's the one i'm going to talk about for now i'm just going to say i don't recommend the this edition. If somebody knows a, a, a good Spanish edition that I can get somewhere, please link me to that because I I would love to get this in Spanish, um, but I can't. I just can't do it with this one. Maybe I'll try again someday. Uh, uh, you know, with a copy that doesn't give me a headache from the smell. Um, so uh, Jose Rizal. He was executed at 35 years old by the Spanish colonial power that was in charge of the Philippines in the late 1800s uh, for these books that he wrote, uh, which denounced the corruption specifically of the Catholic Church, uh, the way the friars uh, and, and the Catholic orders, um, um, orders of friars were kind of manhandling things in the in the country um, and all the corruption that was going on between the church and local governors and how the people were suffering and being mistreated as a and being neglected as a result of this corruption um, all of this is in here but it's actually quite an intricate uh, well I don't know I wouldn't call the book the writing or the plot itself that intricate but there is a nuanced argument in this book. It's not um, certainly not calling for violent revolution. In fact, Jose Rizal was, uh, before being executed, said that he was not in favor of violent revolution if the, the Filipino people were not ready for it. What he wanted and what the main character of this novel seeks our uh, schools, education, um, and and there is no hatred of Spain. Uh, he loves Spain. He loves uh, God, but he sees the corruption of the church, and uh, and calls them out with all the sarcasm <laughs> and um, kind of over the top vilified uh, uh, friar characters in this book. So, um, some of the characters, uh, th that's a downside. Some of the characters are a little bit two-dimensional, especially the bad guys. The good guys are a little bit more nuanced. Um, they're, m most of the, of the women in the novel are pretty two-dimensional. I would say even kind of the main one, Maria Clara, who's the love interest of the main character. Um, so, I've already kind of given you an idea of the plot. Um, but... And is very tied to Jose Rizal's life. So the main character of the novel is a um, a mestizo Filipino uh, native crossed with Spanish, um, and he's returned from studying in Europe. So his his family is privileged enough, and and has some money, and was able to send him to Europe. He studied there. He's come back and finds that his father has. Uh, has crossed the wrong people and has ended up in uh, jail and died in jail while he was away. And uh, this sets off kind of a chain of events as he 
uh, returns to his um, town and uh, seeks a little, digs a little bit more into what happened to his father, where's his father's body. And um, this leads into a chain of events where he seeks to build a school and um, seeks to put what he's learned in Europe to good use in the Philippines, like do some philanthropy, but then finds the Catholic Church, the friars, and the corrupt officials kind of getting in the way, and religion getting in the way of an advancing country in the way that he didn't see in Europe. And all of this completely applies to uh, Jose Rizal's life as well, uh, as he also went to Europe, the author himself, and um, he also went to Europe and studied like op ophthalmology. So he's an eye doctor. He came back. The first thing he did was was uh, cure his mother's cataracts with surgery. Uh, so this was somebody very much like the author we just read, Ernesto Sabato, who was they call him a polymath, right? He had a number of intelligences across the field. He was. An ophthalmologist, like a doctor, an eye doctor, he was, uh, you know, with with a degree in that, and he was also a painter, poet, writer. Wrote two novels. He um, knew. It says on the Wikipedia, twenty two languages. That's a lot. He certainly knew at least seven or eight, and he even, from what I heard, learned Hebrew just to be able to understand the Bible and be able to argue his points against the Christianity that was in his country at the time. So imagine that, imagine, <laughs> it's absolutely insane to me to imagine if in the United States, uh, all passionate Christians learned Hebrew to understand the Bible in its original language before they chose to talk with authority about the subject. That idea is just wild to me, and I think we'd be a better country for it if people would do that, <laughs> but that's a pipe dream, right? Um, just wanted to throw that out there. Nothing against Christianity, but, you know, people say a lot of things about it without ever understanding where it came from, right? I mean, that's not a, that shouldn't be a controversial statement. Um, but Jose Rizal, yeah, a very smart man, and I just went on a tangent there, but, uh, obviously a genius, and this book reflects his intelligence, certainly. Um, I wouldn't call it, you know, the greatest literary novel in terms of, like, the the most intricate plot or the most developed characters, as I already said, but uh, let's continue talking about, about the contents. So, yeah, he's returned. He tries to, to, to do all kinds of philanthropy, find what happened to his father. He has a love interest, Maria Clara, who... He really, you know, he's very excited to marry. Um, he meets a boatman who I consider to be kind of like uh, his, his, you know, the second most important character in the novel, um, a native boatman named Elias, uh, or Elias. I can't remember what the, um, where the punctu punctuation is on that. Uh, Elias, Elias. And Elias... Uh, it kind of represents, uh, as, the, as the novel goes on, sort of a more subversive uh, Filipino at the time. Like, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a really pivotal argument in the book where Elias is proposing to help kind of the, <clears throat> the um, more radical insurgent groups of the country against Spain. And um, the main character of the novel... Uh, E, D, 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 e, Christosimo Ibarra, uh, who basically represents Rizal himself, the main character of the novel, the mestizo, uh, really says, you know, that th that's a really bad idea, you know, to, to start this sort of violent revolution or use those tactics. It's just going to create more bloodshed and we're not going to accomplish anything. Um, but then as the novel goes on, it's like they both start to change their minds, which is really interesting. So uh, I won't spoil like how the story ends, 
in that sense and what each character decides to do but uh, that's kind of what the whole novel I feel builds up to um, and that's what the payoff of reading the entire novel is um, especially understanding that Jose Rizal was executed for writing this novel and that it sparked the Philippine Revolution. Um, so there's really, you know, some some countries have uh, a debate about, you know, what book is the great novel of the country? In the Philippines, there really is no uh, debate about that. This is the great novel of the Philippines. Um, you know, it sparked their revolution. And what else is there to say about it? I, I believe after the Spanish were thrown off, the United States actually uh, took took over control of the Philippines for some time. My history is not great on the Philippines, sad to say. Um, and I didn't really do any research into the specific history besides just the author's life. <clears throat> but more about the novel itself. The prose is really nice at times. Uh, uh, Jose Rizal really shines at descriptions of Philippine rural, small town life, uh, descriptions of even, I, I'd say, like Manila, the city of Manila, like like urban, urban and town landscapes are great, the natural landscapes. He's really good at description, I think. Um, the dialogue is so-so. Some of it's witty. Uh, it, it varies between witty and, like, very overly sarcastic or dramatic. Um, uh, there's some... Sometimes emotions and scenes are a little overblown, almost to a comical level. Like, there's one part of the book where um, there's... I won't say who, but there's, like, a plot to... Uh, kill one of the characters and there's a block like hanging above their head and uh, another character says don't go under that block uh, they're gonna kill you with that <laughs> it's just like it's kind of a and then it falls and barely misses the person it's supposed to it's supposed to kill so it's, there, there's something a little theatrical about this whole thing that um, Jose Rizal it almost makes you like it, it almost takes me a bit out of the seriousness of the whole topic. And um, there are parts of the book that actually made me laugh. Even right at the beginning, there's this funny misunderstanding about uh, um, someone uses a phrase regarding um, gunpowder. And then somebody interjects with a reference to the fact that gunpowder was invented in China. And then some of the friars or one of the friars is like, no, it was invented by a European or something like that. And and it's like, no, obviously gunpowder came from China, but that's the whole joke of the scene. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Jose, Jose Rizal, like, in in many ways, I think, was quite a an advanced thinker. He was much, obviously, much smarter than I am and much smarter than most people um, were at the time more educated as well and um he he shows this in the novel and through his main character but also but also kind of trying to play the hero uh and and then also trying to show the plights of the the humble people who are not as fortunate as he is so um that's kind of the the perspective you're coming from um, again, he's not, he's not anti-Spain, and that's what I think is interesting about this whole thing, is that he presents a, a vision of Spain from the Filipino perspective, and I don't know how widespread this was at his time, that he makes it sound like the majority of Filipinos feel that they owe any civilization they have to the Spanish, like before the Spanish showed up, they were just like barbaric tribes or something. I mean, that's, I'm not saying that that's the case, but that's the impression that Rizal kind of gives of how the Filipinos view Spain, that it's the mother country. It is the country that brought them civilization. And so he is not anti-Spain. He's been to Europe. He's seen that they are no longer enslaved to the strict religious ideologies of the church, that they are progressing, that they have more secular governments now. Or this is the late, this is like 1890s. 
1880s, 1890s, we're talking here. The Industrial Revolution is, has happened. It's happening. And, um, and uh, he looks at the Philippines and he's like, why are we being dominated by these corrupt friars who are in bed, sometimes literally, with the upper classes and, um, and the, the, the local governors um, keeping us from progressing? basically, and, and keeping us from actually educating our people. And that, I think, is the focus, uh, the implicit focus, not only of this book, and but his message in real life as well was education. So, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I really, I, I don't know how good of a job I'm doing actually talking about the book. You know, there's, there's other characters, uh, Captain Tiago, who's the father of uh, Maria Clara, who is uh kind of he kind of represents that uh upper class of the philippines that is in bed with the friars and in bed with the corruption um that's going on between religion and the state um and local governments um basically the shadow of ibarra you know is or or the the mestizo is trying to change things um so Ibarra, you know, is somebody who's like somebody with privilege trying to change things and see the side of the lower classes, whereas uh, um, um, Captain Tiago is kind of representing this upper class that's apathetic, and, uh, and there's a whole kind of Romeo and Juliet situation when Ibarra gets excommunicated and now he can't wed Maria Clara, that's a main conflict of the story. Again, I'm not going to spoil the, how that ends. Um, so th those are the main conflicts of the story. Love, uh, trying to, um, uh, Ibarra trying to build a school, um, uh, have, a, have a theater performance instead of the usual processions at a festival uh, that would be educational, um, trying to make his country a better place and then being kind of persecuted for trying to work within the system to make reforms. So, and that's, and that's where this nuanced argument of like, well, are we being pushed to a revolution, an armed revolution? That's where that sort of nuanced discussion is birthed. So summed, I'll, I summed all that up as best I could. Um, it's a book that... Personally, again, uh, I didn't feel like 100% invested in it, but I was, there were plenty of times in the book that made me think, that made me laugh. Uh, I had a rocky journey with it. Some parts were kind of boring. I just wanted to get through it. Just very mixed. Uh, but, so I won't say it's like, it's like the, the, the greatest literary work I've ever read, right? But... Keeping in mind, Jose Rizal was not principally a novelist, and he was writing this in a very specific time with a specific purpose that makes me reflect and I think is extremely important, extremely important today, because a lot of the criticisms he has and a lot of the reflections he has, think about how religion uh, and churches still have so much power like in the Latin American countries. Uh, you know, the church still has so much power in Peru, for example, or, yeah, in Latin American countries and, and keep, um, keep uh, politics very much toward this conservative, uh, non-progressive agenda, um, and in, in many ways keep, keep countries kind of in the past. Um, there's that criticism to be made today. Of, of that dynamic, while the countries that those churches come from are more secular and are progressing um, in, in technology and advancement and things like that. So that's, it's, there's interesting arguments in this book. There's really, and I would read it again, absolutely. I would love to read it in Spanish, actually, because I can't help but feel like the characters would have come more alive, that it would have flowed better, that those parts that I'm talking about that seem to slow down um, would would come alive a bit more and uh, in the original language, and it would have been a better overall experience. 
The one thing I can say about this English Penguin Edition, though, is that there are a lot of footnotes that are helpful because there are a lot of cultural references to the Philippines that you're going to just have no idea what they mean unless you have a copy with footnotes. So I find that pretty important. Um, so yeah, mixed, but overall positive. Overall, I would read again. And um, there's more to understand here. There's more to look into. And I'm actually very, I'm almost more curious before reading this one again. I would love to read his second book, uh, El Filibusterismo, or the, I don't know how exactly that translates to English. But again, it's that play on words of Filipino and, and filibuster, which sounds like it goes in a more revolutionary direction. And it almost makes me wonder, like, oh, maybe that's the book he got killed for more than this one. Who knows? But it would it would be interesting to see how he evolved from his first novel to his second before dying at the young age of 35 or 36, 35. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Another another author we could call a polymath, a genius uh, and, um, obviously a big historic figure for the, the Philippines. Some consider him their national hero. And, uh, I don't know what else to say about it. That's, that, that's, uh, it's an interesting read. I do recommend it. Don't let any of the negative things I say about it, um, put you off because it is a worthwhile read. I think there's a lot in here that applies to, uh, modern political thinking today, especially in developing nations that are less secular. Yeah, so cool. That's all I got for now. Um, I might do, I haven't decided if later this week I'm going to do a video on um, the graphic novel that I have from the Philippines, probably. It'll probably be a shorter video, but now uh, after that, if it comes, or after the Philippines, I'm going to be starting on my, as I call, the Halloween set list, uh, because Halloween's my favorite holiday, and autumn's my favorite time of year um, here in the north of the United States by the Great Lakes. Uh, it's a, it's the most beautiful time of year weather-wise, and um, for the weather and, and uh, just the whole atmosphere and all the Halloween decorations and things like that, and, and uh, the the beautiful colors and autumn it's just everything about this time of year is wonderful so uh i am just really looking forward to all these books that fit that atmosphere of going into the cold winter preparing for the cold winter harvest time and the spirits that arise and the the um the ever the days that are growing ever darker and so on so yeah, I'm going to stop there. All right, have a good day. Bye.